24, 6. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. When you hear the word war, you may be thinking of a fight that takes place on a battlefield in a foreign nation. Or you may be thinking of the riots and the chaos in the streets around us. But the greatest war does not take place with a physical fight. The greatest war is actually war against truth. We have institutions that proclaim the be of Yeshua, but they are abandoned sound doctrine, and they have turned to the doctrine of demons. But here at EZ33, you will get the truth of Yeshua, uncensored. So join the watchman as we proclaim the truth of Yeshua and fight against all forms of deception. EZ33 starts now. Hey, welcome everybody to EZ33. Uh, sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties. And so I just want to first introduce myself. My name is Cadence Johnson. I'm one of the watchmen here at EZ33. And I've dedicated my life to Yeshua back in 2007. And ever since then, I've just been diving into His Word and uh, just really allowing Him to guide and lead my life. And through my experiences of the past years, I have actually been exposed to many of the false doctrines and doctrines of demons out there uh, through ministries such as uh, the false and demonic uh, ministry of Bethel and a few other uh, related ministries. Uh, <clears throat> and I've actually seen many of my friends fall away to these doctrines of demons and deceptions of Satan. And so it's just been put a, a deep passion in my heart for the purity of the truth of Yeshua and that there's only one Jesus and that's the Jesus of the Bible or again, Yeshua of the Bible. And uh, so this podcast is actually part of that passion to where I can present the truth of Yeshua uncensored in the hope that if one person can be awakened through the through the word of God, through the just the pressing of the Holy Spirit upon them and be brought to a full dedication, a life of living after the teachings of Yeshua and following Him fully committed, this podcast be worth it. Now, I also have a, a guest with me, a wonderful brother in Yeshua named Jeremy, and I'm going to let him introduce himself. Uh, hello, my name is Jeremy Deal, and uh, thank you, Cadence, for having me here. Um, you know, as Cadence was talking, and the same thing as myself, you know, for the past uh, couple years, you know, it's been put on my heart to express and explain the truth and the true truth that's in the Word. Um, you know, it seems like we've gotten away from it for so long, and now here I feel like God's pulling, you know, certain people together to explain the truth and the biblical uncensored truth of uh, Jesus Christ. And, you know, for a while there... Uh, you know, I was one of those followers who followed some of the big name preachers, you know, that you see on TV or, you know, that you hear around in the circles, you know, the charismatic, you know, the new apostolic reformation stuff. And, you know, like I said, it hasn't been until late for the past couple of years, you know, my eyes starting to become more opened and aware of what this truth is and seeing that I was being taught a false doctrine and taught a false Jesus. And, you know, as this goes, you know, this is all giving the glory to God and, you know, speaking the truth. And so thank you for having me here. Hey, no problem. It's such blessings and honors mine. Uh, hey, uh, you might be asking what exactly is EZ33? EZ well, EZ33 is actually short for Ezekiel chapter 33. And that's actually dealing with the recommission of Ezekiel being called to be a watchman for Israel. And so first I want to kind of start off before we get into scripture. I just want to start off in prayer and just kind of um, just really humbly become before the throne of God. So let's go ahead and start with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this opportunity of being able to uh, speak your truth. I just pray that you put your words in my mouth, Lord Father, and that you just remove any aspect of the flesh uh, just out of the way. I surrender everything to you, Lord God. This is your ministry. This is your podcast. And I pray 
Lord Father, that everything that is your will be done through this. And I also want to ask that everyone that's listening, that you just uh, allow their hearts to be open to your word and that they'll be changed by, by your word, Lord Father, and humbly become before you and submit themselves and submit their lives fully dedicated to you and through the transforming power of the Holy Spirit being transformed into your likeness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so Ezekiel chapter 33 But we're going to end up going through verse 1 through, let's see here, Uh, basically verse 9. So we're going to go, at least that's what we're going to start out with. So um, Jeremy, if um, if you don't mind, I'll I'll start and I'll end at verse 6. And if you'll pick up after that. Okay. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, speak to your people and tell them, suppose I bring the sword against the land. And the people of the land select a man from among them, appoint him as their watchman. And he sees the sword coming against the land and blows his trumpet to warn the people. Then if anyone hears the sound of the trumpet but ignores the warning and the sword comes and takes him away, his blood will be on his own head. Since he heard the sound of the trumpet but ignored the warning, his blood is on his own hands. If he had taken warning, he would have saved his life. However, if the watchman sees the sword coming, but does not blow the trumpet so that the people aren't warned, and the sword comes and takes away their lives, then they have been taken away because of their iniquity, but I will hold the watchman accountable for their blood. So. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you will surely die. And you do not speak out to dissuade him for his ways. That wicked man will die for his sin. And I will hold you accountable for his blood. But if you do warn the wicked man to turn from his ways and he does not do so, he will die for his sin, but you will have saved yourself. So basically what's happening here is is two things. We're being told, one, what a watchman is and what their job is. And two, we're uh, being told how that applies to Ezekiel himself and how he is to be a watchman. The first part of Ezekiel chapter 33 is dealing with the militant side of what a watchman is. And that is that when there was a city in the Old Testament or a fort, someone would be designated to either sit on the high place of the wall or a watchtower, and they'll be looking for signs of impending attacks. And so, and specifically in Israel, they would have a trumpet called a shofar. And forgive me if I mispronounce that, I can barely speak English half the time. So, uh, shofar is what they would use to actually blow to warn the city of impending attacks. And then God turns around and tells Ezekiel how that applies to him and that he is to warn Israel that basically to repent and to tell them of their wicked deeds, not to sugarcoat anything. You know, this, this was not a Joel Osteen kind of, of message. This was definitely very much a, a blunt, hey, you are wicked, repent now, or the wrath of God will be upon you, or the judgment of God will be upon you. And so this is what Israel's application of a watchman was to be for, I'm sorry, yeah, Ezekiel's application of, of a watchman for Israel. So you may be asking, okay, this is the Old Testament. How does that apply to us today? Well, let's actually turn to chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. It is basically what's, what's taking place is this is after... Jesus or Yeshua has rebuked the 
scribes of Israel. And the disciples have come, they're showing him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus turns to them and tells them that there's going to come a time where everything that they see is going to be utterly destroyed. And not just, you know, burned up or anything like that, but actually completely destroyed where not one stone of the temple would be in its location that it is now. And that actually happened during the destruction of the of this specific temple because it was aligned in gold. And when, actually when it caught on fire, when they destroyed it by fire, the gold melted in between the seams of the stones. And so when they wanted to gather the gold, they actually had to tear the temple part by part in order to acquire the gold when it was destroyed. <clears throat> and so he sat on a Mount of Olives and disciples came to him privately. So this is not something that he's broadcasting to a conjugation, to, uh, to scribes or Pharisees. He, this is something that he is specifically telling his disciples. You know, this is specifically for his chosen. And so he answers, it says unto them, take heed that no man deceives you. Or deceive you. For many shall come in my name and say, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now, this is very important. You know, Jesus could have started the way what comes after this a thousand different ways, but he emphasizes and starts out with the fact that during the time of the end, which is what this chapter is about, there is going to be deception. And it's not going to just deceive a few. It's not just going to, you know, deceive everyone every now and then someone just randomly on the street. It's going to deceive many. And he goes on and says, you should hear wars and rumors of wars and see that you not be troubled for these are things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. And the nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there should be famines and pestilence, earthquakes and, and diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. As he continues down 24, he continues to give signs of of basically what is going to come prior to his second coming. And I just want to point out that as a watchman, watchmen, they actually look out for signs. And so what's happening here is that Yeshua is telling us what to look for. Just like a watchman in the militant side of the Old Testament would have certain ideas of what to look for in order to recognize, hey, there's an impending attack coming. Here, Jesus is doing the same thing to his disciples. He's given them a bunch of different signs to look for. And this is not just for his disciples. This is for us as his children being adopted through his sacrifice on the cross, we are being told what to look for. And it it continues, again, dealing with deception. If you get chapter uh, 23, I'm sorry, verse 23, it says, Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, and there believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ, false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if we were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And I just want to point out something right, right here. When it says the elect, chosen, and remnant is a language that's carried away all the way through Scripture. And it's to emphasize something. Those that are truly dedicated to Christ are not going to be many. And so when it says the very elect, you're talking about people that are daily seeking after Christ, His Word, praying to Him, just just humbly submitting to His throne, allowing Him to be the King of their lives. And it's saying that deception that would be so rampant that these false Christs and false prophets, if it was even possible would deceive the very elect. And the only reason why it would not be possible is because of the fact that the very elect is indeed studying and 
just immersing themselves in the Word of God and allowing Jesus to rule in their life. So you can just imagine those that are just on the fence, they're going to be carried away with this deception. This is why as watchmen, we are to, one of our tasks is not only to look for the signs of a second coming, which is how the watchman applies today in our work with Christ, but it also we're supposed to call out these false Christ and false prophets. We're supposed to let other children know, the other children of God know, hey, this is not right. And by the way, when was the last time a watchman was praised for giving a good report? They only gave bad reports. And then when they blew the trumpet, that was the report that, that death and attack was coming. And so... You know what? All those fellow watchmen out there that you feel persecuted and criticized and shunned because you, because God put something on your heart uh, and that he shows you something's not lining up with the word of God and that no one likes what you're saying, just be encouraged. A watchman rarely says anything that people really want to hear. So, uh, Jeremy, you got anything um, kind of to carry, carry with that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I do. You know, when you back in uh, Ezekiel thirty-three, when we we're discussing about things, if you notice that one word that was highlighted and that stuck out in my mind when we talked about things, and you talked about an impending warning, was that trumpet? And you know, it, it makes me think, and it, it makes me think on how that trumpet would have sound back then. You know, and just the situation that it was uh, going through. You you got to imagine, you know. Back then, that you know, people hearing those things and people seeing it and wondering, you know, you know, what was the situation of what was happening, you know, back in the Old Testament days, and you know, just just to be there and hear that and see that, and you know, it, it, you hear, you see this word blows the trumpet to warn the people. Then, if anyone hears the trumpet but does not take warning, and the sword comes and takes his life, his blood will be on his own head. You know, I wonder how that applies today when you hear, like, the sirens, you know, when they do the, the siren testing, you know, for, like, the tornado warnings and everything else, you know. <laughs> you know, that, that's, that's, that's like every, 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 so here in, you know, here in Columbus, every Saturday at noon, you'll hear that siren going, and, you know, it's just a test. They announce it, it's a test. This is a test. It's only a test. You know, so they're warning people that this is only a test. Because if someone did not, you know, hear or, you know, was not uh, prepared, per se, to hear it or, you know, all of a sudden just got caught off guard, they think that there was something going on. You know, either a, you know, tornado, uh, surely not the second coming of the Lord because that's not what it sounds like. <laughs> you know, we, we know what the, it, it gives a clear example of what the second coming of the Lord is. If you want to read into Revelation, it'll, it'll clearly lay everything out for you. But it's that sound blowing the trumpet, and it also makes me think of, you know, like these, um, you know, like the historical wars, like, you know, Civil War or going into battle. You're always blowing a trumpet. You know, it makes me think of Joshua walking around the walls of Jericho, you know, at the seventh day, blow the trumpet. You know, what are they, I mean, you know, I, I might, you know, a little misinterpretation there. He might be blowing the trumpet every day, but either way. You know, just hearing just hearing that, and you know, it, it's being prepared. You know, and uh, you know, I, I believe that God establishes people to go out and speak the truth, and when they go out and speak the truth, and it always points back to Scripture, and it comes down. Is, you know, people don't want to hear it. They're gonna, you know, it's like you're becoming the trumpet, and you're as like I'm. You know, this is the warning. You know, like the prophets, they were they were always giving out a warning, and they're always saying, you know, you know, look, you you know, you've defiled what the Lord had you know given you or had said, and now you know this is it. And you know, that's so one of the things that stuck out in my mind is just you know, it's just that trumpet. And <laughs> hey, but go on, yeah. go on, and, and, and that's exactly right. And honestly, the trumpet we have now is the very word of God, is our mouthpiece. And so we're supposed to be presenting the word of God everywhere we go, we, it, whether it be living it out, whether it be uh, actually talking in, in conversation. 
it it just it's never supposed to leave our lives. Right. It, that, that's the very foundation that we in and. Just kind of, and, and you're right. And just kind of getting back to uh, Matthew uh, uh, 24, and, and just to drive this home that that what he what Jesus is talking about is indeed being watchmen, indeed watching out for these things. He continues all the way down. Uh, if you go all the way down to 42, uh, verse 42 in chapter 24, it says, "Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doeth come." But know this, that if the good man of the house had known at what time the thief would come, and, of course, who is the thief? It would be Satan, Antichrist, just, just take it wherever you will on that. Basically, someone that seeks to do harm, deception. In fact, uh, false prophets is also, also called uh, wolves in sheep clothing. He would not have watched or would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. And what's very interesting is that in chapter 24, it, it just doesn't stop here. He, he presents several parables and scenarios dealing with the kingdom of God and actually carries into 25. Uh, so I want, I want to touch on chapter 25 a little bit here. And the, the first part of 25 deals with the wise and foolish versions. And what's very interesting is that both groups of virgins actually fall asleep. But only one group of them are actually prepared. And so what's, to, what's taking place, of course, this is a wedding procession. And back in their culture... What would take place is that the bride would actually have basically her little bridal party uh, of, of virgins that would constantly keep watch for her groom, her bridegroom to come. And oftentimes the bridegroom came in the middle of the night. And so this is what's taken place. You have ten virgins, five are wise, five are foolish. The foolish ones, what they do is that they end up only carrying oil in their lamp, but nothing to replenish their lamp with. And so what happens is that they're, they're there waiting for the bridegroom. They fall asleep. Suddenly they hear a shout. Again, just kind of dealing with a shout, dealing with the trumpet aspect. The bridegroom is coming. And so, but what happens? The wise virgins look to, the foolish virgins look to the wise ones and say, give us some of your oil. And of course, the wise virgins say, if we give you some, we won't have enough. So what's taking place is that the wise virgins, those that have fully prepared, those that have filled their lamps with the word of God, those that have filled their life with the dedication of Jesus Christ, they are prepared. They are ready. Yeah, they might have taken a nap, but they heard the trumpet. They heard the call, the bridegroom coming, and they were ready. And what happens the foolish ones, they try to go by, they try to go into the world and get their lamp refilled. And by the time the foolish virgins come back, the bridegroom has already entered into the wedding feast, into the, into the house. And when the bridegroom comes, he doesn't recognize the virgins and he sends them away. See, this is why it's so important to be watchmen. This is why, as children of God, it is so important to stay in the Word of God and give everything to Jesus Christ. Because if your lamp is not ready, if you are not filled constantly with the leading of the Holy Spirit, with the Word of God, through and allowing the Holy Spirit to transfer you to the likeness of Christ, when He comes, you're not going to go into heaven with Him. You're not going to go to heaven with with him. He doesn't take a half commitment. He doesn't take a half hearted commitment. It's not, oh, you know, I'll just, um, uh, I'll think about Christ uh, when I'm feeling bad. Or, you know what, I'll just worship a Christ that makes me feel good and uh, lets me know that, you know, he died for me because I, I was worthy somehow. No. It takes an absolute full commitment, a full-hearted submission to Him. That is what 
covers the multitude of sin. And that brings me to another point. The most important part of EZ33 is presenting the truth of Yeshua, and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. But the one thing that we have to do is also understand what Scripture says what we are. And one of the things that's out there and all these, these false doctrines and false teachings, all the, the uh, corrupted music from Bethel and Inter- International House of Prayer that get their inspiration from the New Age movement and from the Kundalini of the uh, Hindu religion is this. The music is all centered on worship, worshiping a Jesus that somehow found worth in you to save you. And that is absolutely heretical. Let me just kind of uh, read some scriptures to you that actually tells us exactly what we are. This is uh, Isaiah 64, 4 through 6. From ancient times, no one has heard, no one has listened, no eye has seen any God except you, who acts on the behalf of the one who waits for him. You welcome the one who joyfully does what is right. They remember you and your ways, but we have sinned and you are angry. And you were angry. How can we be saved if we remain in our lives? All of us have become like something unclean and all of our righteousness Acts are like a polluted garment. All of us wither like a leaf, and our iniquities carry us away like the wind. When it says that all of us have become something unclean, and that our righteous acts are like polluted garments, what that culturally means, based on the actual language being used, is menstrual rags. If you, let me put it in modern times. God views our righteous acts as a used tampon. <laughs> and for, and for the, the male side, it's as, it's as equi- equivalent as a used condom. That is how righteous our acts are in the sight of God. And that's, and that's the most righteous of acts in, inside of God is that we have a bunch of used condoms and used tampons out there. That, that, is, that, that is what the word of God says that, that we are. And then it goes on in Ecclesiastes 7.20. There is certainly no righteous man on the earth who does good and never sins. All right, all right, that's the Old Testament. But you know what? Jesus in the New Testament, you know, he's loving. You know, he goes around, you know, with a Mayflower pose and... and uh, and chases down, you know, unicorns that fart rainbows. You know, he's just full of love and mercy. Well, let's see what the New Testament says we are. Romans 3, 10, 18. There is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. All alike have become useless. There is no one who does what is good, not even one. Their throat is a is as an open grave, they deceive with their tongue, vipers venom with their lips. Their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and wretchedness are in their paths, and the path of peace they have not known. There is no one, there is no fear of God before their eyes. And it just it continues to Ephesians, you know, Ephesians 2, 1 through 9. You know, that entire chapter just kind of breaks it down. It it talks about that we are dead before God. Let me ask you, what righteous act can a corpse do? Besides be a cesspool for maggots. It can't do anything. There's nothing that is of any worth. There's there's nothing... uh, there, there, yeah, there's just nothing of worth, worth saving in us. We were never worthy of saving. We, we, we are nothing but enmity against God, dead in our sins and flesh. Uh, all of our righteousness are nothing but full of selfish and self-centered motives. 
All right, so uh, I've made everyone feel really bad and horrible about themselves. Good, because you know what? That's what the gospel does. That's why it's unpopular. But let me tell you what the hope is. The hope is, is that God knew all this, and he prepared a way to redeem us, to cover us, to save the filthiness, the filthiest of, of filth, that while we were sinners, that Romans 5, 8, but God commanded his love toward us and that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Let, 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 me, let me kind of present something to you based on that verse. We know that God is love because scripture says that, is, that he is the epitome, the, the essence, the full revelation and completion, how, whatever, you want, whatever word you want to use of love, that's what he is. God's love is pure because he loved us, objects of no value, full of sin. God's love is pure because he loved something that was not worthy of love. And then he turned around and died for that very object. He died for us. He, he allowed himself to be mutilated to the point of not being recognized as human. His beard plucked out, his back scourged, and then carrying a cross while, while the splinters of that wood was feeding into the pus of his back. And every time he took a breath, the splinters dig deeper. And as he had to pull himself up in order to speak, that for for us to be, for for those that were crucifying him to be forgiven because they knew not what they did. He would have had to lift up and dragged his scourge back across the rough wood just to speak those words. And then he was resurrected, showing us that, that he has victory over death, that when we fall and fully give our fall on our face and fully give ourselves to him, we are made alive. We no longer we no longer are to live by our fleshy desires, which is dead, which is full of sin, which is nothing but used tampons and used condoms. Condoms. We are to live a life guided by his spirit in us. He gives he takes our heart of stone and gives us a heart of flesh. Let, let me and let me present something else to you. Jesus is not going to come and your tainted, corrupted, messed up, full of sin, dark heart. Even if you asked him to. He is holy. He doesn't come into your heart. So if you're praying if you're praying to Christ, you know, you're praying the sinner's prayer and asking God to come in your heart, guess what? He's not going to do it because your heart's not worthy to be entered. No, when you come to know the Christ, when you come to know the Yeshua of the Bible and you fully submit yourself, and you fully submit yourself to Jesus Christ, He gives you a heart of flesh, He gives you your heart. So um, I know I probably went to a rant right there, but this has just been very passionate to me. Um, we have a, uh, a, a listener here that, uh, let's see what she, she has said. And uh, she, so she says, and if I say to a wicked person, you will surely die, but they then turn away from their sin and do what is just and right. And if they give back what they took and pledged for a loan, return what they have stolen, follow the decree that give life and do no evil, that person will surely live. They will not die, and none of the sins that persons have committed will be remembered against them. They have done what is just and right, and they will surely live. Ezekiel thirty three fourteen and 15. Yes, uh, Ezekiel 30, uh, 33, 14 and 15 actually goes on. Uh, dealing with the fact that those that hear the word of God and allow God to transform their lives and they, and they line up their life with the teachings of the word of God, their sins will be 
completely forgotten, forgiven. That, that, that's, that's, that's the completed work on the cross, is that Jesus Christ, he, he saved us from all of our sins. It's a complete, perfect covering of our sins. And all, and, and it just takes us surrendering to that and, and walking it out and, and allowing him to work in us and, and convict us of, of things that are wrong and allowing us and bringing us to repentance each and every day. Listen, we should not take what Jesus died on the cross so lightly. It is not something that we can just wear around our necks and and hope that... um, I'm just lost for words right now. <laughs> um, we, have, we have some questions from the chat. Uh, what does it mean to be prepared? Well, that is simply diving into his word, studying his word, the full, fully studying his word, and allowing God to guide us. And the way we know is by what, by doing what his word says. It says that those that love God will do what he says, will obey him. And we won't find that unless we actually read his word. And so to be prepared, that's, that's, that's what that means, is to fully submit ourselves to Christ and trust in him that his covering is sufficient for all of our sins and all of our wickedness. How do I know Watchman is legit? Lots of uh, people claim to know the truth. You gotta have, hey, hey, everything I say, you got to test it with the Word of God. You got to read Scripture yourself. And you know what? If, if there's something that I'm error in, please let me know. I am human, and sometimes my passion takes the best of me. And, um, and so test everything I say with the Word of God. That is what's authoritative. That is what's sovereign. Not me, not this crazy person on the other side of the mic <laughs> just uh just speaking to you right now <laughs> so if i if i can interrupt on that one yeah. you know you're exactly right because that is um you know it how do i know a watchman is legit um you know lots of people claim to know the truth that's you know that's where you got to test if you start hearing someone saying you know this that or the other this is the way to the truth of life you know but pointing to a different jesus it is part of your responsibility and part of your action and duty you know in serving in christ to go back and test and reread everything and make sure that you know whatever it is that it's being spoken whether it be you know a just by anybody and anyone to go back and read the word and you know it's funny, the other, the other morning, I was hearing something and said, you know, if you want to spend time with God, read the Word. And if you want to hear Him speak, read it out loud. So it, it, that's, that's the moment to really sit down and really read the Word and understanding, saying, okay, look, you know, is, is, is this person really lining up to say, are, are they walking the walk and talking the talk? You know, if they're not then, you know, it is to be prepared and to understand and be like, okay, I may be on the, you know, offense with this guy or this, you know, this person. But again, you know, it's a watchman will always point it back to the truth and will always point it back to the word, you know, which is the Bible. It is the living word. It speaks. So when it goes out and it comes, it, 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 it speaks the truth. And if anybody is speaking to you in the truth, but you're not being diligent and being like, you know, a, a Berean and going back and studying scripture, then, you know, you're not really, you know, being prepared. And then you're not really taking the, you know, the scriptures or the truth, you know, um, you know, um, what am I trying to say? You know, strongly, you're just, you know, you're taking it loosely and just, you know, calling it what it is. And, and that is exactly right. Uh, hey, we are uh, about out of time here, and um, 
Again, I want to apologize for the technical difficulty. Like uh, from earlier, like I said, this was our first uh, podcast. Uh, we will, next time we'll uh, get it all sorted out. We'll be we broadcast live on Saturdays at uh, uh, nine p.m. Eastern time. If you like what you uh, hear, just uh, check us out at ez33.org. You can also on that website. You can follow us on Twitter and uh, YouTube as well. Uh, hey, uh, there's also a button there for uh, to donate if you feel this is a ministry you want to donate to. There's still some equipment that uh, that we definitely need to get a, a hold of. But most importantly, EZ33 is committed to bringing you the full truth of Yeshua and just to helping you to grow as believers in, in Jesus Christ, as believers in Yeshua. So I just want to thank you for listening. Uh, subscribe to us at Speaker uh, Spreaker Podcast Radio. Uh, there you can actually go download the app there. And again, just search for Easy Thirty Three. Until next time, God bless. Take care. <laughs>